Okay, so as we discussed so far in this, in these chapters, I, and as I was reading these, I took a, I, I followed along with a, the Bible Project, uh, their video on uh, Revelation. I took a couple notes, and I noticed that a lot of things in Revelation that people think are uh, strictly, uh, what what's it, symbolic or are strictly literal, uh, I find that um, Revelation tends to have properties of both, and uh, here's where I'm going to show what I'm talking about, because uh, as in the previous chapters, as the seventh seals were being opened, and as the sixth seal brought the day of the Lord, uh, it shook the earth, and the people cried out, who can stand? And in chapter 7, John pauses to answer this question, and it's the, it's the Lamb, which represents Jesus, and the multitude behind him, is all of his followers, they, can, they are able to stand before God, because they are justified through the Lamb. And then, finally, here in chapter 8, the, the seventh seal is broken, and the seven trumpets ready, are you know, ready to play. And John retells the story of the seven judgments with the seven trumpets and the first first five trumpets actually repeat uh egypt's plagues the locusts the darkening of the sun moon just to name a few and all oh, and the water turning into blood and here's the thing the nations don't repent after this similar to how pharaoh didn't repent way back in exodus and this is actually a bit of history throughout the Bible repeating itself, and I'll t sh tell you more on that in a moment. And then in chapters 10 through 11, and particularly verse until verse 11, 13, uh, John, uh, before the seventh trumpet plays, uh, another it's a it's another pause is made where uh, John is told to eat the scroll. And told to measure the temples, but ex exclude the courts. Now, some think this is either a literal destruction of Jerusalem, because this is in the middle of a destruction. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Okay. When I was given a reed like a measuring rod, an angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and those who worship. Believe the court which is outside the temple, and do not measure it, for it has been given to the Gentiles, and they will tread the holy city underfoot for 42 months. Okay, so people think that this is either A, a literal destruction of Jerusalem, or B, the temple represents God's people who are going to suffer persecution. And uh, this could be, and this seems to be more likely the case, because God's people... In the New Testament, are referred to as a temple all the time. Uh, but it's important to remember that if this is the case, and it, I think it is, uh, this uh, external defeat won't uh, take away our victory in Christ, because Christ is going to ultimately prevail, and that is what the Book of Revelation, in a nutshell, is all about. And then finally, through the rest of chapter 11, there are two witnesses. And uh, people think that these are either two literal prophets or be their symbols of the church's prophetic role. And again, the symbolism is more likely, but it does have some literal aspects to it. Because uh, it's symbolic to the history of uh, the gospel. The lamp stands, because these are... Because these are refer the the witnesses are referred to as lampstands, or and uh, they're meant to represent the churches, and then the beast kills the witnesses, but God vindicates them and brings them back to life, and finally after seeing the after seeing this the nations finally do repent, and the seventh trumpet plays and the nations are shaken as God's kingdom comes. And the first half of the book of Revelation is brought to a close. Now, what was I talking about earlier when uh, history in the Bible up until this point has repeated itself? Or more or less, uh, the history of the Bible leading up to uh, the gospel. Because 
In the Old Testament, they were living under the law, and now we're living under the covenant of grace through Jesus Christ because he was risen from the dead, and we were justified because of it. And that's what... And uh, the church is basically born again, and that's what the two witnesses, I think, are meant to symbolize. Uh, flipping back to Romans 5.20, Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. Because the nations, similar to Pharaoh, hardened their hearts after the plagues and the law, because the law only points out sin, and it makes sin apparent, and it brings in more sin, because that gives the devil opportunity to harden our hearts and make us feel hopeless and that we might as well commit these acts because we're sinners anyway but then christ died and resurrected then christ died for us and was resurrected and he became sin and buried it in the ground with him and then he rose on the third day because of our justification now what does this have to do with the two witnesses the two witnesses represents the the church the body uh, the believers being s reborn again in spirit because and this is made possible through Jesus so it so these are so these chapters show how history will eventually repeat itself because before Christ returns the these plagues will be brought up and the nations will not repent but they will be given one last chance and and whatever this is it'll somehow be a reminder of the gospel even though it's already done because Christ has already done the work so how that's going to happen I don't know I've talked myself into a bit of a corner but the gospel does get preached around the world and I think that that's really what's going to be happening is people are going to hear the gospel again but it also, the two witness thing could also be literal because that's not unheard of. And like I said, Re Revelation has uh, uh, both. Because the, Re the book of Revela Revelation handles both um, metaphorical things and literal. And the two witnesses could also be literal because miracles have not been, miracles like this are not unheard of throughout the Bible. But it's important to remember that the book of Revelation is not uh, a code to decipher the timetable of uh, when Christ is going to return. It's simply something to make us aware that the times are going to come and aware of persecution and that we need to remain faithful. But th all this stuff will come to pass and this is what's going to happen in the end times. But it doesn't have to be scary. Because for those who are in Christ, it's going to be a wonderful time when we finally see Jesus. Anyways, guys, I hope these videos have blessed you. And uh, when we come back, we'll get into chapter 12. See ya.